Hey everyone, welcome back to Widget Wisdom. And I'm super excited to kick off this 30 day Flutter series where we will deep dive into Flutter development from the ground up. Whether you are a beginner or someone looking to sharpen your skills, this series is for you. Today we are going to start with the essentials, setting up Flutter SDK, understanding the IDE and creating your first Flutter project. By the end of this video, you will have Flutter up and running and you will understand the basics of an app structure. So let's get started. First, let's get Flutter set up on your machine. Whether you are on Windows, Mac OS or Linux, the process is pretty straightforward. Head over to the official Flutter website at flutter.dev and click on this get started button. Choose your operating system and follow the download instructions. Once you have downloaded the Flutter SDK, extract the file to your preferred location. Now you will need to add the Flutter path to your system environment variable. This allows you to use Flutter commands in your terminal or command prompt. On Windows, open the environment variable settings, find path and add the Flutter SDK's bin folder. On Mac OS and Linux, you can add the path to your shell configuration file like bash rc or zsrc. Once that's done, you can verify the installation by running the command flutter doctor in your terminal. This command checks if your system is set up correctly and if there are any additional components you need to install like Android Studio or Xcode. Flutter doctor will give you a list of issues or missing components. So follow the instruction if you need to install Android Studio, Xcode or any other necessary tools. For Android users, don't forget to install the Android SDK when setting up Android Studio. Once the Flutter SDK is set up, the next step is to choosing an integrated development environment to write and run Flutter code. I personally recommend two options, Android Studio or Visual Studio Code. Both have great support for Flutter development. But today I'll walk you through Android Studio. Download and install Android Studio from developer.android.com. Once installed, open it up and from the welcome screen, you will see the option to install the Flutter and Dart plugins. These plugins will provide code completion, hot reload and other Flutter specific features. If you are using Visual Studio Code, it's very similar. Just open VS Code, go to Extensions Marketplace and search for Flutter and Dart extensions. Install both and you are good to go. Now that your IDE is ready, let's move on to creating your first Flutter project. To create a new Flutter project in Android Studio, click on New Flutter Project from the welcome screen. You will be prompted to enter a project name. Choose the project location and make sure the Flutter SDK path is set correctly. Once the project is created, you will see the basic structure of a Flutter app. Let's quickly go over the main files and folder. First one is the main.dart file which is in lib folder. This is where the magic happens. The main.dart file contains the starting point of your app and you will be writing most of your code here. Then we have pubspec.yaml file. This file manages dependencies. Any external packages or assets you want to use in your app will be declared here. Then we have Android, iOS and few other folders. So these are the platform specific folders that Flutter uses to compile your code into native apps. You typically won't need to touch these unless you are working with native code. Now let's open the main.dart file and look at the default Flutter app that comes with every Flutter project. If you hit the run button, it will compile and open the app on an emulator or real device depending on your setup. As you can see, Flutter provides a simple counter app by default. You can tap on this floating action button to increment the counter. Now let me break down the code here. First, let's look at this line. This imports the material.dart package, which gives you access to Flutter's material design components. These components are what make it easy to build beautiful, modern UI layouts using Google's material design principles. By importing this package, we can use widgets like buttons, text fields, app bars and more. Now, every Flutter app begins with the main function, like this. And this is the entry point of our app. In Flutter, 
the run app function takes the widget you pass it in our case it's my app and makes that widget the root of your project tree in simple terms this is what boots up the app and sets everything in motion now let's take a look at the my app class this my app class extends stateless widget what does that mean well a stateless widget is a widget that doesn't need to maintain any state or dynamic data it just displays static content in our case it returns a material app which is the main structure for a flutter app that follows material design principles inside the material app we define these three key things the title which is the name of your app the theme where we define the look and feel of our app here we have set it to a blue theme using primary swatch and finally the home which is where we define the starting screen of our app in this case we are pointing to my home page another widget that we will break down next now let's talk about my home page this is the screen that the app will first show when it loads the first thing to notice is that my home page extends a stateful widget this is a different from stateless widget because it can hold and update dynamic data we will use this to create a counter in our app it also takes a title as an argument which is displayed at the top of the screen inside the app bar but the real action happens in the my home page state class which controls the behavior of this widget now here is the fun part the my home page state class is where we manage the state of our app like updating the counter every time the user taps on the button first we declare an integer variable counter and initialize it to 0 this variable will hold the number of times the button has been pressed then we have the increment counter method this method calls set state which tells flutter to rebuild the ui with the update counter value every time the user taps the button next let's focus on the build method this is where the ui of our app is constructed at the root we have a scaffold widget which provides the basic structure for the app's layout like the app bar body and floating action button here's how the scaffold works app bar this shows the app's title at the top then we have body that is the main part of the screen where the content is displayed we used a column widget here to arrange the text vertically the first text widget displays the message you have pushed the button this many times and the second text widget displays the current value of counter styled using the app's theme then we have floating action button so this is the button that user taps to increase the counter it calls the increment counter method every time it's pressed finally let's talk about how state management works the magic of flutter state management comes from the set state function whenever the user taps the floating action button set state is called which tells flutter to rebuild the widget tree this updates the ui with the new counter value and there you have it you have successfully set up flutter explored the ide and ran your first flutter project in the upcoming videos we will be diving deeper into flutter's widget tree state management and building beautiful uis if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video in our 30 day flutter series if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video